such a big energy and emotional output on, on Wednesday night. How are you guys feeling off that, knowing that you got a game basically uh, just a couple days later? Yeah, um, it's exactly, that's a good description of what it is. Uh, it was an emotional night. Um, ended on a positive note for us, and you know that's kind of what we're picking up. Um, we want to turn that into some positive energy and try to channel that. Um, and you know, fatigue is um, is sometimes can be a little mental, and um, you know we are trying to forget that and uh, move forward. And there's only one point in going to Cincinnati, and it's trying to win a game, and that's the mentality we're going to take. For the players who did put out 120 minutes or played most of those minutes, do you expect them to be available for you? How much rotation are we looking at in Cincinnati? Um, you know, well, we're still in recovery mode, and so we'll make those decisions later tonight and uh, tomorrow morning. But um, everybody came out of the game pretty, pretty okay, and so we feel good about it. Uh, obviously, everybody was happy afterwards, and there was talk of like, and you think you said it yourself, and sort of this can set us up for the home stretch, really, sort of put us in a good space for that. How does, how does that translate? How does this win on Wednesday set you up for the rest of the year? Because the way you've always talked about it is each game is its own thing and you sort of compartmentalize, but how do you take that energy as the way you see it as sort of moving you towards the final step here of the season? Um, I still believe we should take it game by game and, and really half for half. Um, you know, well, We've discussed our, our match plan and ideas um, for the first half in, in Cincinnati, and we have a plan for the second half. Um, depending on how, how results go, that plan goes this way or this way. Um, you know, I think I think the energy um, and the idea and the feeling that you have already raised the trophy in um, remembering what that feels like, remembering the emotions, understanding the hard work that goes into that, the incredibly hard work from the players, um, and having that in uh, experience um, at this late in the season is great to bank on and it's something we can use as motivation you know when things do get a little tough and uh, it's going to be a difficult 90 minutes in Cincinnati players are gonna have to suffer a little bit but um, understanding that raising a trophy is something special it doesn't happen very often um, that can be a source of motivation for sure uh, to try to do it again and we had a similar night in Seattle um, at uh, Starfire Complex after a Leagues Cup final where the boys had to suffer um, and put in work in order to put themselves in a final again and fight for that chance to raise the trophy. And so those are the feelings and those are the emotions that are going to help us in these last couple of weeks. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, tough place to play, obviously been a very good team the last couple of years. What, uh, what do you make of them at this particular moment? What are you seeing from them and what's the challenge? That yeah, I mean, they certainly have... Um, freshness category uh, it's a clear uh, check for them uh, you know they haven't had a lot of games in the last month uh, enough to keep them in rhythm but not enough um, to whether overloaded or fatigued so you know and but you look at their roster whether they're fatigued or not fatigued it's a very well built roster um, very well balanced no weaknesses as far as I can tell um, um, and so it's it's just a really difficult team to beat and even more difficult at home which is why they are where they are in the table and consistently um, over last season and this season. So it's, um, you know, compliments uh, to them, their you know, management and, and coaching staff, uh, Pat and, and Chris, they've done a great job. And so we'll have our, our work cut out for us, but we have a few ideas up our sleeves. Uh, last, last one for me. Uh, Marlon, what's, uh, what's his presence been like so far? He got his first chance to play with you on Wednesday. Um, what are you expecting from him over these last few games? Uh, hopefully more minutes and you know it's it's really getting some some fitness and unfortunately we don't have training sessions um, for for that purpose it's it's you know crunch time so to speak and so he's gonna have to get those minutes get his fitness in in, in, in real match moments um, which is good um, but it's also not easy but a player of his experience and all the places he's been around the globe and all the experiences he's, he's had in his career will help him in those moments and help us. Um, the sample size of seeing him with our group has been very small, so it's, I think it's too, too, too early to tell exactly, but um, you know, each game will give us more information, and we'll go from there. Okay, there yeah, we go. more Marlon for you, Coach. Just wanted to know uh, how is he physically? I know, uh, you know in match is, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a big ask, but uh, there were reports of a failed physical in the Middle East, which opened the doors for LASC to sign, but 
Um, regardless, you know, how is he physically? What have you seen from him in practice? And what is his role going forward in this roster, given that it's such a short contract that he's going to have with the team? Thank you. Yeah, his role is is to help help us uh, primarily uh, defend. And um, I think he's also technically a very calm player under pressure, um, a good passer, um, has tons of experience to close out the big games, to play in big games, to deal with pressure situations. And I think, you know, that's his role moving forward. You know, where his physical limitations are, we don't know. Got to get him match fit first, and then we'll go from there. But um, as far as his general health goes, there are no, um, no question marks. All right, and uh, okay, Mr. McKnight, go ahead. Thank you, appreciate it, guys. Uh, Steve, Pat Noonan, could you, I, I tried to find this, but could you enlighten us, were you teammates with him with the men's national team, number one? And secondly, you both joined your current clubs as manager prior to the 2022 season. Lots of success for both of you since. Each of you is sitting on 49 regular season wins and just wondering about the relationship uh, in general and the potential um, 50th win and the success you two have had over the last three seasons. Yeah, I, I think we're uh, different people, different coaches. Um, yeah, I think you can say, if you, if you want to put it, d define us in numbers, then there's some similarities, I guess. But um, um I've always respected Pat as a player, and yeah, our paths did cross um, with the national teams and somebody who I watched from abroad, you know, lighted up in the MLS a lot, and I uh, loved watching Pat play, and he's, he's great to watch coach as well. Um, you know, somebody who's always kind of thought as a coach, as a player, and played that way. Um, no surprise to me that he's a massively successful coach. Um, and you know, I had more experiences with, with Chris Albright and, and also more of the same um, way he went about his career and um, you know, being a smart, smart guy and putting together good rosters. And those two um, have built a very good uh, program and team. And uh, but again, not surprising, having known both for many years. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't uh, couldn't be prouder of, of to see how success with Pat is um, I love it when other coaches are, are as successful or just as, or more successful than we are um, it means some good things for US soccer down the road and um, you know we need to continue developing players but coaches in this country as well and um, as well as um, you know get on one page as far as development in our young talents goes but I think uh, it's great to see Pat's success and I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing him and Chris uh, tomorrow. Uh, okay, we got uh, Marlon. Go ahead, Marlon. Hey, Steve. Marlon Vela is a big part of the club, a big part of the community in LA. Um, obviously, he hasn't played soccer in nine months. Can you talk to me about what you see from him in practice? And is there a time frame of when we can expect him to see him on the pitch? No time frame. Um, you know, he's here every day, putting in the shift. Um, you know, when you step away, your body um, has the chance to rest, and you know the, the chronic inflammation that is probably in all of the athletes um, also goes away. Um, but that means when you when you start the engine back up again, there's going to be uh, you know some 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 issues there that pop up, and your body has to get used to the daily grind and the pounding you put yourself through as a professional athlete every day. Um, and that's what his body is going through right now. And uh, I'm confident Carlos will get back to um, a state where we'll all be able to watch him play again um, and he'll enjoy it again. But that takes time. Um, and we do not, we are not putting ourselves under pressure. Um, and when he's ready, he's ready. All right, the last question, uh, Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Steve, thank you for your time. Uh, What's the current situation in the team with the team captain? I know Ilya has been the team captain the whole season, and I know Carlos recently returned to the team officially. But we noticed that at the end of the during the match on last Wednesday, uh, Aaron 
long past him that to Paul's head, but Ilya didn't receive the the, the captain. Uh, so it was uh, it was just a personal decision? It was your decision, or or was uh, the current situation on that? Status quo has not changed. Ilya is our captain and will, will remain our captain for the remainder of the season. Um, what happens on the field with the, the captain's armband, I'm not sure that is significant at all. It could just be a spatial issue that there just wasn't. Maybe Ryan was the guy, right? The one closest to Aaron, I don't know. I'm sure it's not premeditated. Um, Ilya's our captain, and we're very proud that he's our captain. He's very important for this group and this club. Um, and he is our captain, and that's it.